This flip lesson will certainly be more than five minutes, but it is the directions, it is the once over for my meiosis, a type of cell division, that you need to know. And this is how we get the cells that are going to go into the Punnett squares that we've been talking about. This is a picture from the textbook. And meiosis is two steps. The first step of meiosis that in the textbook they call meiosis one is simply mitosis, right? So duplicate the chromosomes, line them up at the middle, one side to each end, end up with identical cells, right? We've seen that happen before. But then for the sex cells, for the pollen and the for the pollen and the seed, for the sperm and the egg, what happens then is without duplicating, the cell goes through another split. And so what happens here is they line up in the middle. And so this would be like metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two. And then you end up at the end of meiosis, you end up with four cells that are not identical. So let's take a look and we're going to go through this and color them as we go so that you can trace that path. Okay, so in more detail than you might want to look at, we have this happening twice here, one for each parent. So this the female's first, it's right here on the first page. And what I would do just to show you, and again, just to kind of drive it home, you're going to see in this, in this lesson what's going to happen is we do this over and over. And um, so you have the cell. It duplicates into two identical cells. So that part basically is the mitosis or the meiosis one. So color your chromosomes so they match. And then, um, and then it does this second split. And you get four that are not exactly the same. Okay, and then this is, uh, you know, obviously the same thing. This is showing the genes on the chromosomes. And we color these in. Okay, and so then we do the same thing over here with the uh, male cells. We go through basically a mitosis here. And then it goes through the meiosis and makes four cells, each with half of the original number. And I guess on your handout, it has the male first and then the female. Doesn't matter. Same pattern, same idea as we go through this. So what this is representing is whatever traits the parents have, they will pass on one of their alleles to their child, but not both. So if the parent has the curly haired trait and the straight haired trait, then they're going to pass on just one, either a curly haired or a straight haired, but not both. Right, and then they separate, and it is random. And as you read about yesterday, the chromosome theory of inheritance is simply that the genes are on the chromosomes. There is, um, there's another thing called the, uh, I just forgot, that, but it, that they separate independently, independent assortment. And so it's random which one you get. So how do you know, how do you know which one of these will be passed on to the offspring. How do you know? You, yes. You don't know, it's totally random. And so as we do our activity today, we will use this spinner. The spinner has choices one, two, three, and four, and you spin to see which one the child gets. And you see these are labeled one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So if we take a random spin here, and it comes up as number one. So that means this parent will pass on this gene. And then we randomly choose which trait you get from the male. 
and it is another number one. So the point is, is that it's random. And I'll show you in a minute, we're going to do it with Punnett squares, so it'll make a little more sense. But the point is, it is random which one gets chosen. So for the activity today, here's what we're going to do. As you see on these following pages, as you see on the following pages, there are a whole bunch of Punnett squares. First, you're going to see this, which is a chart of what traits your creatures will have. And then you have this, which is a picture of the features. Now, listen closely. The way the book, this is from Macro to Micro on page 223, I think. And what, what it says to do is you're going to partner up and the directions, I think, personally, are a little creepy. It says choose if you're going to be Clyde or Claire and draw the cartoon figures and then decide what your children are going to look like. Yeah, now that's just a little bit uncomfortable, I think. So when I was teaching this the first time, off the top of my head. So here's what, I, here's what you're going to do. I know you don't have this picture, but hang on just a second. So these are the different traits. You need to know which ones are dominant, recessive, and you need to know which traits. Now, when I was first doing this, I thought, you know what? That's just awkward, you know, pretending, and we're talking about reproduction. So let's just say instead of people, this is squirrels. You're going to have a pet squirrel. Now, the problem is, is these are human facial features. So we will have squirrels with human heads because that is way less creepy than sitting around the table with your friends talking about reproduction. Okay. Excellent. So that's what we're going to do. And so you're going to have squirrels. Okay. So back to this. How do you know which traits your squirrel will have? Please take a look at this page. So starting right here, you have this column, which says Clyde. And then you've got Claire. And then there's offspring, but we're going to worry about that in a minute. So, which trait does your living thing have? So, to figure out the traits of the parent, you don't get to choose the traits of your pet. You, your pet comes with traits already. You will take the spinner. The spinner has two different sections. The inner section with numbers, which we are not using right now. The numbers are for the offspring. The outer section says homozygous, heterozygous. Homozygous, recessive heterozygous. So what you will do for, first we have Clyde, so I shall spin my spinner, and my spinner comes up to say, spins and it says heterozygous. Who can tell me? So heterozygous, genotype and phenotype. What would be the genotype if it is heterozygous for head shape? Yes, what's it going to be? Heterozygous means? Big R, little r, because hetero means different. Heterozygous means hybrid, big R, little r. Then it says, what's the phenotype? Oh, look at this, practicing all these words. Phenotype, what is the phenotype if the genotype is big R, little r? What is it? Round head. OK. Now what we have to see what the beautiful Claire has for her traits. And my spinner says, homozygous recessive. So homozygous recessive. Homo means the same, so what letters is her genotype? Little r, little r. What is her phenotype of head shape? Blockhead. Now, so here's the thing, guys. The offspring, I want to, over offspring, I want you to write spin for number. You do not use the spinner to find out just this because that would just be giving it the same random chance of the parents. First, you have to do a Punnett square. So go to the next page. You go to the next page like this. Oops. Now, some people are saying, I can do all the Punnett squares in my head. Do I really need to write them down? Yes, and this is why you need to write them down. Here is number one, head shape, round or block head. What did our female have? <laughs> little r, little r. Our female had a blockhead. What did the male have? Big R, little r, had a round head. 
you will do, don't fill this in yet because you're going to spin for your own creature, right? But I want to show you. So we do the Punnett square, right? Now, probability of expressing the recessive trait. In this Punnett square, what's the probability of getting the recessive trait? What is it? 50, right? Two out of four, 50%. Now, if you read what it says, it says determined by spinner. So what is the child going to have? How do we know? We don't get to choose. It's random. So now we spin on the spinner and see what number comes up. And we get number one. So now we are going to circle number one. What is the phenotype of our, what's the genotype of our child? Big R, little r. What is the phenotype? Round head. So in this case, it came out 50-50. Can our child end up with big R, big R homozygous dominant? Can they? No. The child cannot because that's not a possibility. You need to show me that you did the Punnett square by circling this and putting it there. And then we go back here, and we write down that the child had big R, little r, round head. Now, here's what we're going to do next. Next, I have enough spinners that you can work in groups of two. The first thing you need to do is, well, actually, you can do it two, two different ways. So, so there's three parts. One is spinning for the parent, or you're spinning heterozygous, homozygous. The second part is doing the Punnett square, and then you spin the number for the child. Okay, now here's the third part. The third part's best of all. Then, for the third part, as a group, so you're working as a partner, um, spinning, writing it down, and then I have to find my last thing here. Then, you are going to take this information, and you are going to draw a beautiful family photo of your squirrels with human heads. You only need you only need one portrait for your family. So if you two work together, you're going to turn in your two things together, you're going to have it all circled. You draw Claire, you draw Clyde, and then you draw the offspring. What if you have extra time and you want more than one baby squirrel in the litter? Do you have to do the Punnett squares again? No. Because you already know the probability. All you have to do is go through with the spinner again and circle the different number. 